right, let's do it guys. What's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Erin and you know what? We're doing it today. This is the video that you guys have all been asking me to make. So I'm finally gonna sit down today and do it. But yes, today I'm showing you guys how to make that top-down raglan multicolor sweater. Like I mentioned in previous videos, I think this time I wanna stick to more of like a blue, green, and maybe like a little bit of purple theme. So I pulled out a lot of like my bluey type of shades. You guys know I got a lot. And for all those who are wondering, I wanna say 90% of these yarns are Red Heart Super Saver. Some of them are Karen Simply Soft. Yeah, I think that's it. But other than that, to get started on this video, the materials that you will need besides the yarn, I'm going to be using a 6.5 millimeter hook, a nice big fat boy. If you guys have even a seven or a 7.5, I would suggest using an even larger hook just to make your sweater very lightweight. For this project, I highly recommend using some stitch markers because these are going to help mark where I need to make my increases on the sweater. And as you guys probably know, that is the trick to this top is just knowing where to increase and not losing track of your increased stitches. All right, I'm coming in a little bit closer, but let's just go ahead and get into the sweater. And the first trick is just making your beginning chain. So however wide you want your neck to start at is where you should be chaining at. For this one, I do wanna make it a little bit tighter this time. So I will be chaining just for the base of my neck. In case you guys are planning on making the sweater exactly like me, I will be including the directions here on the screen. All right, so I've gone ahead and created my starting chain and I have created a chain of 68 stitches. So from this point, I wanna make sure that it's nice and flat and I'm going to connect my chain in the round. So after my 68th chain, I'm just going to slip stitch into that starting chain in the row. All right, so now I will be working in the round. So now that I have my work joined in the round, the first thing that you want to do is create one regular row of stitches. You can choose whatever length of stitch that you want to use. I'm gonna start off with a treble crochet. So at the start of my row, I am going to chain three. And into that very first stitch in the row where I did slip stitch, I'm gonna start off by adding a treble crochet into that chain. So here I have that chain three, which does not count as a stitch. And right here is my very first treble crochet in the row. So now for the rest of row one, you just wanna work one treble crochet into every single chain. All right, I finished up the very first row. I've already gone ahead and cut off my yarn, but I just wanna make sure I can get this, oh yeah, over my head easily. So this is the shape of the neck that I have right here. It's pretty rounded boat neck, which is what I'm gonna go for in this video. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I add my increases to my sweater. All right, so like I said, I already cut off my yarn. I still have to join my work in the round, but when I join my work at the end of my row, that is where I change out my colors. So I will be doing that in a second. But here is where I wanna show you guys where to place your stitch markers. So here is my work in the round. I'm simply just going to fold it in half. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and pretty much pinch off about two inches from the edge of my work over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and count out how many stitches that is from the corner of my work. All right, so from the very corner of my work when it's folded in half, I've counted out six stitches from the edge of my work and this is where I'm going to place one of the stitch markers. All right, so like I said here from the edge of my work, I have placed that stitch marker. This is six stitches. And likewise, I'm gonna count out the same amount of stitches on the other side of the half of my work. Boom, okay, there are my two little stitch markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this on the other edge of my work. I'm gonna mimic the same amount of stitches. All right, so I've gone ahead and added all four of my stitch markers and now I can go ahead slip stitch the end of my row together and I'm gonna change out colors. All right, so right here you guys can see I slip stitched with my very new color. And guys, I have pointed this out in some of my past videos, but another pro tip 
If you're working in the round, you have to turn your work at the end of each row. If you continue to work in the same direction every single round, you're gonna get a really crooked back seam or side seam. And because I want it to be straight and essentially virtually seamless, I need to turn my work at the end of each row. So for row two here, I am going to chain three again. All right, so now I'm getting really excited for the sweater. For row two, you do want to place one treble crochet into every single stitch until you reach your stitch marker. Into that stitch with the marker, you're gonna to wanna to place one treble crochet, chain one, and one more treble crochet all into the same stitch. So this is what that increase looks like. It's really subtle, but it's pretty easy to see when you're working in the round. You just need to keep an eye out for where you see two treble crochet into the same stitch. And then after that, you just need to work one treble crochet into the top of each stitch until you come up on your next stitch marker. And it's gonna work like this for every single row. So like I said, at your next stitch marker, go ahead and add that increase, work one treble crochet all the way across your row, and then at your next two stitch markers, follow the same increase pattern. All right, so now I'm coming up here onto my next stitch marker. I can go ahead and remove it now because I don't need it anymore. And again, I'm just gonna be working one treble crochet, chain one, one treble crochet, all into the same stitch. All right, so pretty much at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up row two. Of course, I'm gonna add those increases at my next two stitch markers but I can't stress this enough. That's really all that there is to this pattern. All right, jumping back on here, just to cue you guys in on what I have so far, I have finished up row two and I've gone ahead and attached my new yarn. I'm kind of going with like a olive green, you know, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of green, maybe a little bit of purple. But again, at the start of my row, guys, don't forget to turn your work at the end of each round. I'm just gonna work one treble crochet into each stitch until I get to my increase. All right guys, so this is what I mean by coming up on that increase again. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I sure can. So my increase is coming up right here. So into that increase, remember we have a treble, a chain one and a treble. So into that first treble stitch, I'm just going to work one regular treble stitch. I'm gonna treat it like a normal stitch because that's technically not the increase. And then here, if you guys look really closely, I have my chain one right here. So into this chain one space, I'm actually just gonna be working through this gap instead of working directly into that chain space. But here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a treble crochet right here, chain one and treble all into the chain gap. But yeah, like I said, right here into the chain gap, I went ahead and placed my treble, chain, and my treble. And now I can go ahead and continue to work one stitch into the top of each stitch until I reach my next increase over here. And that is pretty much, again, how the whole body goes. I just wanted to show you guys with a new yarn what stitch to work into. All right, so now I have my second increase in the row. And if you guys kind of look closely, you can kind of see where the work is starting to round off there. So we are starting to get that boat neck shape. Um, and when I finish row three, I'll just go ahead and take a pause. I'll probably throw it on and show you guys the progress with just three rows. So I actually finished up the fourth row. I just went ahead and picked out a black yarn, but now I'm just gonna throw it on over my head just to show you guys what it looks like so far. All right, so my neckline is a little bit wider than I had originally planned. So you know what, we're just gonna roll with it. It's okay, I still accept her as she is, but this so far is the sweater, and this is only four rows. And I think, honestly, before I head in and start working my sleeves, I think I only need to work, I'd say, two or three more rows, and then I can jump on over how to make the sleeves, which is even easier than how to get this started. But yeah, let me know if you guys like this pattern so far. Leave me some love down below, leave me some comments. So yeah, I digress, but let's just go ahead, keep working on this 
and I'll jump back in a little bit to show you my progress. Hello guys, welcome back again. It is the next day and apparently I'm wearing a dress for the second day in a row. Who am I? But I wanted to catch you guys up on what I have so far. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I count? I have seven rows so far of the treble crochet. And like I said last time, I'm just been uh, working in the round. Let's go ahead and throw. But so far with my stitch count and everything, this is the length that I have so far of the sweater. So I think at this point, this is where I'm gonna start working on the sleeves. I have enough length here at like the armpit to start you know joining the two back pieces and as you guys can see it does come all the way over my shoulders so i think i am ready to start working on the sleeves and show you the rest of like the body portion but before i go ahead and show you guys how i work the sleeves i want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor of this video which is again anna luisa jewelry like i've mentioned before in my past videos anna luisa is an environmentally conscious jewelry company based out of New York. And honestly, this is one of the very first things that caught my eye about this brand. But I'm sure you guys have all been noticing that I have been wearing their jewelry nonstop for like my past 10 videos. I'm obsessed with the quality of their jewelry. I genuinely love it. Anna Luisa's jewelry is always nickel-free and hypoallergenic. And for me, that is the most important thing, honestly, when it comes to jewelry. But their items have honestly stood the test of time. I have been wearing these huggy hoop earrings ever since they first sent them to me. And they did send me a few more items like these beautiful pearl dangle earrings. Like just look how these catch in the sunlight. They're so gorgeous. I love stacking their earrings. And one of my new favorite pieces that they sent out to me is this gorgeous, oh my gosh, look at this ring guys. Such a statement ring. Anna Luisa operations are 100% carbon and water neutral. So you get to wear quality jewelry without damaging or affecting your environment. And to top it off, Anna Luisa uses recycled metals wherever possible. And they also use 100% recyclable and reusable shipping materials. And of course you guys already know that I'm hooking it up with another coupon code. Go ahead and use my discount code ARINB10 at your checkout and you can receive an extra 10% off your very first order. So thank you again so much to Anna Luisa. So for now, let's go ahead and get back into showing you guys how to make these sleeves on this top is I'm going to be creating a chain that goes from your front increase and loops around and connects to your back increase. And of course, we'll be doing it on both sides. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach a new yarn here at the start of my row and work one treble crochet into each stitch. And once I reach that increased corner, from there, I'm going to create a chain of like five or 10 and then go ahead and slip stitch it into my back increase. I am starting on row eight, so for row eight, Go ahead, attach your yarn, and work your row like normal until you get to your increase stitch. All right guys, here we go. I have worked those stitches and I am coming up on that increase stitch right here. So like I said, this is the part where I'm going to create a bunch of chains and then connect it to the increase on the back side of my work. So at my increase, because I haven't worked into it yet, I'm gonna go ahead and work one more treble crochet right into that increase. All right, so now that I've worked into that increase stitch, I'm now just going to create a chain. And this part is really up to you. Um, I actually wanna gear this sweater to be a little bit more fitted around the arms. So I think I'm just gonna go for a chain of five, and then I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to my back piece. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and find the increase on the opposite side of my sweater. So make sure you fold it in half and grab the right increase on the opposite side, but right into that chain space where we've been working the increases, that is where I'm just going to slip stitch my chain together. So by creating this little chain in between your two increases, you now have like a new row to start working into when it comes to your sleeve. So thankfully, that's not too tight or anything. And now that we have the little chain for our first sleeve all done, 
In order to get to the other side, I'm really just gonna pick up where I've left off here after I've joined my work. And again, just continue to work one treble crochet into every single stitch until you get to your other increase on the other side. So I'll meet you there in a second. Alrighty, I'm coming up on the next increase. So of course, don't forget to work one treble crochet right into that chain space area. All right, so this is what I have so far. I'm gonna go ahead and chain another five. And then after I've created that little chain, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and find the other increase on the corresponding side and slip stitch into that increase. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see that I've now made two separate armholes and all I did was connect it with a chain. So here from this point now, all I'm gonna do is finish up working on the back side of my sweater and then join it in the round here at the end of my row. And now I can start working on the sleeve portions. So when you're working in the round for the sleeves, when you come to your chain space, you're gonna work your trebles into that chain space in the round. Now I have my little chain here at the start of my row and into that same stitch, I'm going to be working my first treble crochet and I'm gonna work one treble crochet into each chain space. I've just finished up working those treble crochet stitches along that chain row that I have right there. And now I'm just gonna continue to work in the round. I'm just gonna work one stitch into the top of each stitch in the round. And when you get back to the start of your row, turn your work, guys. I cannot stress that enough. Yeah, guys, I'm just out here giving y'all pro tips, trying to help you guys out the best that I can. But yeah, I feel like from this point on, when it comes to the sleeves, I'm just going to let you guys work. There's not really too much more that I have to say. I got a little bit more of the sleeve done. So let's just go ahead and show you so far what this sweater is looking like when I'm just working with this one sleeve. I know it looks a little bit funky. I am trying to go for a little bit tighter of a feel here at the top of the sleeve because with that previous one, it was very oversized and baggy and I love that but I just wanna try a little bit different technique with this sweater. And then the style that I am aiming for with this sweater is to cinch in the very bottom of the sleeve. That way it just kind of like sucks in and it's a little bit tighter. It's not, you know, flailing everywhere. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get a good portion of this sleeve done because I gotta get this video out. I gotta get it finished for you guys. But yeah, just follow the same pattern that I've had here on the screen. I'm gonna continue to work on the sleeve and show you guys what I have after half of this is done. Good morning guys, welcome back. It has been quite a few days later, but I'm trying to get as much done on the sweater as possible. And this is what I have done so far with the sleeve. And then here at the very bottom of my sleeves, I did decide to cuff them in so that they're nice and tight around my arm. But I really like how I have more of like a cinched in cuff right there. And if you guys are interested in recreating more of a cinched or tight cuff for your arm, all that I really did was on the very last two rows of my sleeve, I just started adding decreases every third or fourth stitch. And then I really just stopped when I realized that it was tight enough around my arm. And that's all that there is to the cuff. So I just went ahead and finished up both of those sleeves. And now it's time for me to start working on the body. I know on the last sweater, I had a super extreme crop style, but at least for this one, I do want it to cover at least half of my body. So I'm just going to, now that I have those sleeves attached, I can work in the round for the body a lot easier. So seriously, all I'm gonna be doing is adding more rows to the body of the sweater. And that's literally it. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and match the body to the sleeves by cinching in the body once I get another eight or nine rows done. So I'll check in with you guys really soon. Let's just go ahead and time lapse and then I'll show you guys what I have in a few hours.
All right, guys, I'm finally back with the finished sweater. Now, trust me when I say that I have been busting my butt off to get this finished just in time for you guys. So please just like, you know, a round of applause for my broken fingers at this point. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. And as you guys can probably tell, it is a little bit different of a style than the previous cropped sweater that I have shown you guys. But if you guys are trying to recreate that exact same style, it's really easy to get back to how I did that instead of this style. To be honest with you guys, it's actually a lot easier to make that style sweater than the one that I did here because this one is more of a full length sweater. But as you guys can probably tell, the sleeves here are a little bit different. I decided to add a couple decreases on the last two final rows of the sleeve so that way you guys can see here it like cinches in and it's nice and tight and I can like pull the sweater up onto my arm trying a little bit new of a technique and as you can see my boat neck style I'm so happy though that this neck did come out more rounded instead of square like that past top that was something that I did want to fix so I'm really happy that the stitches that I used with this raglan top down pattern did result in that rounded crew neck style. The final thing that I worked on was the body of the sweater. For this one, I did wanna go for more of a full length type of sweater. That way if I wear something high waisted or a skirt, I can tuck the sweater into that skirt and it still results in kind of like a cropped looking sweater. But again, if you're trying to go more towards that previous sweater than I made, just don't add as many rows as I did. I honestly could have stopped probably right around here to give it that cropped look again but because I want to try to make you know more one-of-a-kind pieces and not replicate the same exact style I did just go in and add a ton more rows to the body no increases no decreases at the cut on this neck tell me that's not like super feminine so yeah this pretty much wraps up my scrappy sweater how to make video. Because I do have the other gorgeous, very colorful sweater, I am thinking that I'm going to list this one as well on my website as a one of a kind piece. It's so warm, it's so comfortable. At the same time, it's pretty lightweight and breathable because I did use a 6.5 millimeter hook. But yeah, I think I'm going to sell off this sweater to a good home. So if you guys are interested in buying this one of a kind sweater made by yours truly, uh, keep a lookout on my website in the next few weeks. I'm also going to be listing that beautiful mohair sweater that you guys have seen me made. And that is also a one of a kind, no replica type of sweater. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys the run through on the sweater, show you guys the final result. And I'm seriously over the moon. I'm really glad I've been dipping more into my scrap yarns recently, trying to just reuse and recycle everything that I have. Oh, and real quick before I go, in case you guys are still here at the very end of my video, go ahead and comment, hi Millie, this is my new plant. I just got her like a week ago and I'm doing my darndest to take the best care of her. So yeah, just let me know if you guys have made it here to the end of the video. I know a lot of people probably click out at this point because I just ramble. But let's go ahead and pull this video to a close. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys got a little bit more useful tips on how to make scrappy one-of-a-kind sweaters. Much, much love going out to all of you and happy holidays. Bye.